now have a brief introduction from the affirmative side member. Thank you, Chairperson, judges, audience, and of course, opponent. My name is Sakura. I'm a constructive speaker from the affirmative side. And through this year, I, we had many matches against Utsunomiya High School. And today, we already have uh, one match against Utsunomiya High School. But we always could enjoy uh, debate against Utsunomiya High School. So uh, also, I want to enjoy this debate. And let's have fun match ever. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. My name is Akari. I'm a talk speaker from the Affirmative Span. Thank you, Chairperson and the other audience and my opponent. My name is Akari. I'm a talk speaker from the Affirmative side. And I'm a little bit sad because uh, my policy debate for my debate, the number is limited for this year because this is, uh, uh, yeah, this is what I'm seventh round. But uh, I, I through the year I I I made effort with my uh, members and of course of course um, teachers and parents and on the opponents all over Japan also uh, Utsunomiya High Schools are really great opponents and we we were improved each other together so. Uh, I wish this match would be also a great match, and I want to enjoy this debate. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, opponents. Thank you, judges. Um, my name is Arisa, uh, and I uh, the affirmative defense speech. And yes, we already met Utsunomiya High School today. And because I'm shy, I cannot talk with boys, but I want to make friends with them again. <laughs> um, Yesterday and today, I'm sure that I'm the happiest person in the world because I could enjoy debate so much and I have such a great friends, teachers, supporters. So I'm sure I'm the most happiest girl in the world. So this round also should be really an enjoyable match and let's enjoy as much as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson, uh, opponents, and audience, and judges. My name is Kaede. I'm a summary speaker from affirmative side. So actually, the first match uh, today was against Utsunomiya High School, and I learned a lot of things uh, in that match, and I had so much fun. So I want to know how the, this debate was so fun. So I want to make more fun than this debate uh, than uh, last match. So I want to make efforts and I will make friends with uh, those handsome boys. Thank you. Thank you. We will now have brief introductions from the negative side members. Thank you, Chairperson, judges, audience, and of course, my opponents. My name is Kasadake. I'm the constructive speaker from the negative side. Uh, actually, Utsunomiya High School and the Takezono High School is a neighborhood in the prefecture. It means that Utsunomiya High School is in the Tochigi Prefecture, and the Takezono High School is in the Ibaraki Prefecture. So we are neighbor, and we all we uh, all debaters must be tired today because we have de debated two days. So why don't you? Uh, go home with, 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 with us because it is some neighborhood and Kitakanto area. Uh, that is only jokes. <laughs> so we uh, we want to we want to show our efforts through this uh, year. So please enjoy this debate. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson and judges and my opponent. My name is Ryota. I'm a tax speaker from the negative side. So I'm a test speaker, so I will attack their self-introduction. I'm not Hansan. We are not Hansan. <laughs> and the reason why we didn't, we couldn't communicate is not she is not she is shy, but we are shy. <laughs> but after the match, yeah, we would like to communicate with each other, and I will make a wonderful debate. 
with the audience and their opponent and the judges and the chairperson. So I'll do my best. Thank you. Thank you, chairperson, judges, audience, and also, of course, my opponents. My name is Shoma Otsuka, and I'm a defense speaker from the negative side. And looking at these so many people here, I'm still nervous, so I cannot come up with something interesting or funny, so I'm sorry, but I cannot tell you something interesting, so please look forward for his speech. <laughs> Thank you, Chairperson and judges, and of course, opponent and audiences. My name is Kozo. I'm someone speaker from negative side. Um, firstly, uh, please forgive us to be against these cute gods in the process. And um, <laughs> his request is behind all my ability. <laughs> Um, so, there is one thing that I have to say here. Um, thanks to cooperation with our teammates, of course, other, other teammates, and teachers, and opponents, and of course, judges, we, uh, we can be here and we, ha we have had many opportunities to improve our ability, not only English, but also logically thinking or something like that. So, um, um, I'm very proud to be here because of uh, thanks to cooperation and thanks to um, many friends, uh, we can be against uh, Takezono High School which are very strong debate school like so um, please enjoy this debate and please be moved by this debate and please think more about your life and this. <laughs> Thank you. Are you ready? Yes. Please say your name and start. Thank you, Chief Russell. My name is Akira. In Japan, legalize active bronze euthanasia. This will save patients from unbearable pain and save patients from loss of dignity. Therefore, Takizono affirmed the core position. AD1, save patients from unbearable physical suffering. Observation. According to Statistic Brain 2018, 55% all terminal patients die in pain. According to Dignity in Dying 2017, Sandy Bladen was diagnosed with a rare and incurable cancer and was told she would experience severe pain leading up to her death. The treatment was very difficult and the side effect horrendous. My soul was filled with uncertainty and fear that my pain and sickness will not be controllable. But having the option of assisted death will change all that. For me, assisted dying isn't about dying, it's about living. Unquote. Process. After the plan, Patients will be able to escape their pain, suffering, and fear by, fear by choosing to die with help of doctors, family, and friends. Impact. Patients will be saved from fear, pain, and suffering. According to Dr. Coben, Western General Hospital, Edinburgh Court, pain occurs in up to 70% of patients with advanced cancer. In about 10% of these patients, the pain is difficult to control. Unquote. This means that 27,000 people in Japan spent their last days without adequate pain relief. To stop people's intense suffering, we should take this plan. 82. Save patients from loss of dignity. Observation. Patients have immense suffering. According to Professor Jackson, London School of Economics, a patient explained his severe situation. Quote, I need help in almost every aspect of my life. I am fed like a baby. I have no privacy or dignity left. I am washed, dressed, and put to bed by kids who are, after all, still strangers. I am fed up with my life and don't want to next, spend next 20 years or so like this." Unquote. Patients like this have no dignity left. They have become nothing and do not feel, feel human anymore. This is what Professor Jackson referred to as loss of self. Patients who seek euthanasia suffer from intense physical, psychological, or emotional pain. Process. Medical technology has improved, and now average life spans are too long. People are living longer than their bodies can remain strong, so it is now essential to have a choice of how to end life. 
Without euthanasia, patients who lose their autonomy are still forced to live, even though they are in extreme mental suffering. Euthanasia will allow them to choose how they die. Impact. We can protect people from intense suffering. According to JAMA 2016, in Belgium, about 940 patients took euthanasia because of loss of dignity. Oh, and over 80% of these patients were elderly. Based on Belgian and Japanese population calculation, because Japanese population is 10.6 times larger than that of Belgium, we can estimate that 9,964 patients in Japan will desire euthanasia because of loss of dignity. Moreover, because of Japan's aging society, the number will be much bigger. This means that we can conservatively estimate that at least 9,000 people in Japan need their intense suffering to end. Patients who have lost their autonomy and dignity feel like they have become a thing. They no longer feel like a human being. They cannot do anything without help. How shameful and painful it is for them. We must allow them to have the right to decide the end of their own life. Therefore, Pakistan urges you to adopt the resolution. I repeat our signpost. Our AD1 is save patients from unbearable physical suffering. And our AD2 is save patients from loss of dignity. Therefore, we should take this one. Thank you. Thank you, speaker. Are you ready? Yes. Please say your name and start. Thank you, Chairperson Justice. My name is Gordon. As for your AD1, firstly, you said that even though patients can take um, palliative care, um, it is difficult to control pain. So yes. how can you say so? So if you say we can use palliative care, you could you should show that uh, uh, can all patients use palliative care or no, no. I'm asking what is reason why patients con why patients because patients palliative pay. care is not effective for uh, so ten percent of patients. Why? Uh, because of, uh, for example, a side effect or it is uh, allergic to medicine or bleeding difficulty or terminal cancer. Oh, okay, side effect and um, bleeding difficulty. Or... Uh, and also, even though patients have done access to uh, palliative care. Oh, okay, okay. And if we will, if we will um, provide enough to facility or enough medicine for the doctors, do you admit that? Um, Palliative care is effective. We should prove that yes, point is we will evidence. Prove, if we will prove the, all of these things, do you admit that effectiveness of uh, palliative care? No, so why are 27,000 uh, people? Okay, sorry. thank you. Moving to A2. Okay. okay, firstly, you said that loss of dignity, yes. but in your speech, you mentioned it on um, mental suffering or autonomy and dignity. So, yes. what is, which is your impact? Well, our impact is that save patients from loss of dignity, and loss of dig dignity comes from loss of autonomy. So, and why? to have why? Why? As uh, I showed you in our observation, the patients uh, are cared by uh, family or caregivers by oh, every day. Okay, okay. So if those people will okay. Lose. So if patients de depend on all things on family or care caregiver, um, these patients lose dignity. You say? Not all case, but. Uh, they are cared by a family for one uh, year or okay, more than okay, two years thank you. if we continue okay. every day. And um, your target is elderly, right? Not only elderly, but elderly people percentage is big. Um, Three, okay. Thank you. Are you ready? Uh, yes. Please say your name and start. Thank you, Chairperson, judges, and audience, and my opponents. My name is Katsutake. DOI, irrational choices of terminal patients. Irrational choices of terminal patients. Present situation, Japan is group-oriented society where causing trouble is a biggest shame. So, terminal patients are worrying about family burden. Seire Mikatara Hospital in Hamamatsu says, 50% patients feel they are a burden on families. According to Ministry of Internet Affairs in 2017, about 99,000 families quit their jobs for the patients. Also, according to President Online in 2013, the average cost for cancer is 1 million yen plus 16,000 yen for the hospitalization every day. Seems your family sacrificing time, money, and even jobs, or becoming depressed about their, di about their diseases, patients feel guilty. 
according to the life resources charitable trust, the side of family depression and consciously may give suicidal thoughts to patients. Effect. The legalization could send them the messages, it's better to die than to be a burden on others because there is no chance of recovery. Feeling guilty or pressured, patients will request euthanasia as if it's their will. This is an irrational choice. However, safeguards will not work because even the strict checking system allow euthanasia to the man who just wanted to reduce family's financial burden, the man with mental illness and disabilities, according to Live Action in 2016. In Oregon, according to The Guardian in 2018, after euthanasia was legalized in 1997, patients concerned about the burden of family and friends increased from 13% in 1998 to 55% in 2017. And according to Life Source Trust, 66% patients said their decision of euthanasia was for their family. In group-oriented Japan, the number would be larger. In fact, human beings are weak, especially when depressed or pressured. Japan Times in 2014 said Masatoshi Oda strongly demanded euthanasia, worrying about his family's burden. But after recovery, he regrets his irrational choice. Life is irreversible. Once lost, it will never return. We must not force our loved ones have to die. DA2, Heart Society for the Disabled. Heart Society for the Disabled. Present situation. Now, Bano Euthanasia is protecting weak people, especially the disabled, who are likely to be seen as burden. English disabled activist Jamie Hale said, quote, disabled like me are constantly told that we are financial, emotional, and practical burden on the society, unquote. In 2016, Satoru Uematsu killed 19 disabled in Sagamihara, insisting, quote, disabled should be euthanized, they are wasting tax money, unquote. Later, NHK got another few mails which supported Uematsu. Also, Nihon Keizai Shimbun in 2014 said 97% men mothers had abortion when they find their babies had Down syndrome. They thought this is better than living with disability. Effect. Allowing euthanasia would give great pressure to the disabled, according to Telegraph in 12, 2011. This is because the government will officially legalize the way people can be killed. Then, the disabled, who are not originally the target of euthanasia, will lose only protection by the government and the whole the society will become harsh to live. They feel they are the burden and pressured by the society. According to Scope in 2014, when assisted dying bill was proposed in England, 64% disabled strongly oppose the bill, fearing their life will be less valued and pressured to die as cost-saving measures. Importance. Independent Living Institute says there is no country where the disability rights movement is supporting euthanasia because euthanasia is another technique to clear disabled from the society. What legalization brings is not right to die but duty to die. Euthanasia expert Sir Bors said in Netherlands legalization had to be a super toward towards widespread, widespread premature death or disabled. Actually, Dutch euthanasia report in 2017 said number of disabled euthanized has become seven times larger from 12, 2012 to 2017. Japan has 9.4 million disabled. They are just unfortunate people born as disabled. So we must not take this plan. Thank you. <clears throat> we will now have a one-minute preparation time. Yes. Yes. But why is it this bad? Because patients choose uh, uh, euthanasia because they have unbearable pain. Not main reason is not uh, family's burden. Uh, they have unbearable suffering and incurable disease, right? So that why it is bad? Even uh, such terminal ill patients want to live, but from, uh, they don't want to be a burden of other, want to be a burden of family or friends or caregivers. So they will choose euthanasia even if they have a will to live. But do you uh, have data that says main reason was about um, uh, the burden of families? Yeah, as I said, 66% uh, okay. said. Thank you. And next, uh, about your DA2. Yes. Uh, uh, so your argument is about involuntary euthanasia or uh, disabled people choose euthanasia by themselves? I didn't mention, uh, what I want to say in yes. our DA2 is that by the legalization, uh, disabled will find it hard to live in the society okay. because... Thank so you. Uh, 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 
Teleport is lacking. What? What uh, do you mean? Okay, uh, I think next. How many disabled pe the people died because of disability in the Nether Netherlands? Do you have the data that says number of disabled people who died because of disability? Uh, so what I want to say is that so the most important point is not the uh, disabled will force to choose euthanasia, but society which should disabled should be euthanized will, pro will be progressed. But they don't die, right? But as I told you, actually that euthanasia report in 2070 said number of disabled euthanized. Do you have that example of the people who die because of disability? Yeah, as I said in my contractual speech. They, but you don't have that uh, example of die of people who die because of disability. As I said danger. in my okay. evi okay, as evidence. And which are disabled people are you are you talking about? Physically disabled people or mentally disabled people? Oh, both. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We will now have our uh, Christian time has ended. We will now have our two minutes preparation time. Thank you, Chairperson and Minister. First of all, I will attack AE1. First of all, I, as, as I asked the duration time, the problem uh, about, uh, about the palliative care and the opioid is three types side effect, RZ, and accessibility. I will show it. First of all, A, side effect. Uh, the, according to Hammond Care, actually, a third of the, the patients feel a bit sick after starting the morphine. But soon, they adjust the morphine, and finally, the side effect will disappear. Therefore, morphine is available, so it's is not needed. B, RNC, has a, it has a solution. According to Nihon Kama in 2010, if an opioid doesn't work, doctors can do opioid rotation, by which doctors just change it to some other opioids that can work with the patient, so it is not a problem. And C, as about the accessibility. According to Fujikeza in 2015, by 2024, the sales of painkillers such as opioid prescribed for chronic pain in Japan will increase by 62%. This means that in Japan there is no opioid shortage and the accessibility is enough. And moreover, according to Crown Library, 96% of the patient can escape from pain by morphine. So for the rest 4%, stronger opioids such as methadone will work. It is no problem. Second, even if it doesn't work, but we can, uh, but patient can escape from pain because of the following guideline of Nihon Kama Ryo Gakkai. Morphine does, if morphine doesn't work, channel sedation is effective. By lowering the consciousness, patient don't feel pain at all, so it is not a problem. Three, they talked about like in presentation, 55% it died because of the cancer, but there is no proof that how many people wanted to die, wanted to ease the nays because of their cancer pain. Therefore, they're not, even if they talk about the 50%, that is not lacking to explain their AD1. Moving on to AD2. <clears throat> Okay, first of all, they talk, as I, uh, there is a multiple impact in the first place. As I asked the target, this uh, elderly or patient, and they say about uh, the not, not elderly people, therefore, uh, not elderly people, therefore, the number about 80% of elderly and the calculation is not many. And they never explain about the about patient, how many patients will be, will be serious, are uh, Asian about loss of immunity, therefore the number is nothing. Second, even if some e effect is ex existed, but losing the autonomy doesn't mean loss of dignity. For example, as a physicist, Stephen Hawking was diagnosed as ARS, ARS when he was 19. He was thought to have only two years to live, but he could live to 96. He said, I'm doing pretty well with the disease 45 years after I was first diagnosed. And then Hirota Lokutake, who was born without arms and less sex, let says, I was first diagnosed more uh, Enjoy my life, even though I have a barrier. Even if people cannot move, they can still enjoy their lives. Like this, how dare we can say looking con losing control means loss of dignity. So their definition of dignity is wrong, their DA2 is not standing. Second, uh, <clears throat> we cannot say loss of uh, autonomy means loss of dignity because the meaning of dignity is different from person to person, as I said. Not, all, not everyone thinks losing control means losing the loss of dignity. And as they admit it, not their per then not some page, some people feel losing control is loss of dignity. Therefore, they're so seriousness, so we oppose. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. I have some questions. My name is Arisa. And for your first chapter of 81, you said that morphine uh, is good, but in your um, but next in your first attack, you also said that only 96% can escape their pain by morphine. So are you admitting that other 4% cannot remove their pain by morphine? No. Why? 
as I said, uh, if uh, for the rest of all so persons. Other people can be saved by peripheral sedation, right? Now, first of all, the 96% patient can escape from pain with morphine, and for the rest of all patients, we can use the methadone. At least we choose around the opioid as like the morphine and such kind of things. And even so, if it cannot be labeled, so we can label the part of the Why you didn't show the evidence which shows that other four persons can be saved by that medicine? For example, there are the opioid rotation is one of the good examples that but we can why use morphine. Do, do you have the data which says that that medication can save other four persons? Do you have any data? What sort of pattern means? Okay, thank you. Um, and also, to our 82, you said that we are not talking about elderly, so 80% is no meaning, but I think our, in our constructive speech, we said that big part is elderly, so how how this attack damage our argument? But in the first place, your effect, your impact in the AD, at the 82 is a double impact, elderly, uh, elderly and the patient. As, as I ask in question time, the elderly is not actual, as they are admitted. You ad our, admitted. Argument, our target is people who lost dignity. And uh, yeah, there, I ask their... Big, big part of them is just elderly, so we are not saying that our target is elderly. But our target is... Uh, people who lost dignity, and some part of them is elderly people. So I don't think this damage our argument. Um, okay, thank you. Sweet. Also, you said that um, Steve Hawking, they could live for 55 years, but it is just one example, right? We all know that he could live alone, but do you mean that other majority who cannot uh, recover should die? Why only show one example? Well, you have to show about such kind of example can never, can be, can be, can okay, be denied. Thank you. Thank you. Question time has ended. Are you ready? Yes. Please say your name and start. Thank you, Chairperson. I'll start my talk speech. My name is Akari. First of all, for the both DAs, the opposition said that patients will die unnecessary because of uh, disability or pressure from family, but expert and professional will thoroughly check the volunt patient's voluntary request. According to Dr. Deng, University of Bangkok, quote, there must be a solo evaluation through multiple consultations regarding the conditions of unbearable and untreatable psychological suffering, unquote. This process is not meaningless. This, is, this assessment is done by trained medical specialists. They will not allow someone to commit euthanasia against their own voluntary will. And if they meet the criteria, they should have right to receive euthanasia. Second, the system works and doctors refuse patients, uh, patients which don't meet the criteria, according to the Guardian 2018 in Netherlands quote. One in every four does not meet the legal criteria. Another 25% 20 20 withdraw their request and 20% die while their cases are being evaluated, unquote. Only 30% of applicants finally receive euthanasia. Euthanasia criteria work and they work well. I move on to the DA1. Uh, patients, uh, patients will choose euthanasia when they feel that they are bad for their family and want to make their family life better. It is not a pleasure, it is their own opinion. People can't die without strong intentions, so patients will die for their family because patients strongly believe that it is the right option to make family better. Uh, in such case, no one will suffer because everyone recognizes as the euthanasia as the best option. Fourth, they say that patients will die unnecessary because of pressure. However, there is no problem. First, according to Dr. Emanuel, University of Pennsylvania, 41% of patients choose euthanasia because they believe that they, be they were a burden on family. The most important point is that this was not the only reason given by the patient. The patients gave more than one answer as the reason for euthanasia. The number one reason was loss of dignity. Worried about uh, burden of family was just a, an extra reason and not the major reason. And they never showed that the financial burden will be solved by the government. Therefore, the situation will never change and we should allow them to die. And I move on to the DA2. They said in a uh, Fifth, they said in constructive speech, disabled people feel they are burden on society. But this is actually attack attacking their argument because discrimination has already happened now. Uh, 19 disabled people was killed be uh, by, uh, by a man. So uh, current situation, uh, therefore current situation, uh, sorry, and so there, there is no uniqueness. Six, they say that in Netherlands, disabled people died with euthanasia. I checked the data, and their data, the data's target is not disability, but psychiatric reason. So uh, no, no disabled people died because of disability, and people who have psychiatric, uh, uh, psychiatric uh, reason have rational mind, as we showed in our 82, so there's no problem. And they say that we should, uh, they say that, 
uh, disabled people shouldn't die. However, different disabled people have different disabilities and their situations are completely different. So it is impossible to make perfect world that all people can completely satisfy. So they never showed us that the support will be done, so we should allow them to die. Thank you. Are you ready? Please say your name and start. Thank you, Chairperson. My name is Shoma. Let me ask some questions to you. Yes. Um, first, uh, first of all, you know, in the second attack point, you are both ADs. Yes. ADs, you say yes. that 30, only 30 percent receive euthanasia in the Netherlands, right? Yes. Okay. Can you prove that those 30 percent are actually voluntary and not uh, and completely satisfying the criteria? Yes, because uh, those uh, patients who couldn't meet the criteria was refused. And yeah, the thirty percent of patients are fine. Uh, have uh, but actually, good reason those, for using it. But as we told you in the constructive speech, actually those people who wanted to die for pam for family was accepted in Netherlands. What do you think about that? So I said in uh, the ones the attack that dying for family is not pleasure, but their own opinion. So their reason will should be uh, accepted in the Indonesia. Thank you. Your second attack point, you said uh, second attack point or DA one. You said that number one reason is loss of human dignity. It means that number of people who said was the biggest, right? No, uh, patients who request euthanasia for uh, euthanasia is not, uh, loss of who who requested request um, euthanasia is. Okay, please show me the evidence later. And you talked about financial burden will be solved, but what do you want to say about it? Uh, financial burden will not be solved by government, but what do you want to say this? So uh, you said that patients who have financial burden shouldn't die. However, you never show that the support will be done after the plan or in the current situation. So those situations will never change after the plan. So we should allow them to die. To, we should allow them to die. We didn't say that those people with uh, patients with financial burden should die, but patients will feel. Uh, if the financial burden exists, they will feel sorry against the family, so uh, the situation will happen. Better. So after the plan, uh, so you mean that even if we don't accept euthanasia, those patients will continue to suffering because of financial okay. burden, right? Okay, thank you. And moving on to RDA2. First of all, um, as a, you didn't, you didn't, that, you didn't attack to, you didn't attack to the point that legalization would be the pressure, right? I'm pardon. I'm sorry. You didn't attack to the point that legalization would be pressure, pressure those disabled people. No, uh, because. Uh, uh -huh. This, uh, patients who have disabled and their situation is serious, they should have rights to this, uh, receive euthanasia. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Question time has ended. We will now have a two minute preparation time. Please say your name and start. Thank you, Chairperson. I'll defend our argument. My name is Aiza. So first of all, in question time, they said if we can show that palliative care facilities are available for everyone, your argument doesn't stand. They said so, but they never attacked this point. According to Kojima Eskotenshi College, quote, while more than 320,000 people die of cancer every year, there are only 3,399 beds in palliative care units across Japan. And about 85% of cancer patients have little choice but to die in general hospitals, unquote. So their point doesn't stand. And next, they say that morphine uh, don't have side effects, so it is effective. But next, they said morphine can save 4% of patients, so it is contradiction. And next, they say that uh, they showed another medicine, but they never showed that I got the data, but that data don't show now a specific number of how many patients can be saved. And we, can, we don't know if this medicine can save those 4% or not, so they can never prove this point. And also, they say that how many, actually, how many people actually want to die because of their cancer? So I'll show you. Um, our impact of 27,000 people in constructive is conservative number. According to Professor Nakazaka Osaka University, 10 to 30 percent of terminal cancer patients choose euthanasia. In Japan, 367,000 patients die of cancer every year. So we can say that 36,000 to 110,000 people will choose euthanasia. This clearly shows that the figure in our constructive speech of 27,000 is a conservative number. And next, for our 82, uh, and also, in, for our 81, they said that we can use terminal sedation, but sedation is not useful. According to Professor Rao's Gent University, quote, continuous sedation is an acceptable end-of-life decision, but it is used for refractory
pain, suffering, and on patients with a life expectancy of less than two weeks. Unquote. Let me repeat that. Less than two weeks. This means that sedation is not an option for people who have long-term suffering. For example, patients who have a long-term pain for a month or even years before they are going to die. The only way to stop their long-term suffering is euthanasia. And for our 82, they say that dignity is different for each other. Yes, we admit that different, it is different for each other, therefore it is important. And they said, we don't know what is dignity, but dignity is where human rights come from. To have dignity means to look at oneself with self-respect, with some sort of satisfaction. It means to feel human, not degraded. And they gave us example about Steve Hawking, and they said we have to show example of people who actually are suffering, but we already showed it in constructive speech, so let me repeat again. The patient explained their suffering. I need help in almost every aspect of my life. I'm fed like a baby. I have no privacy or dignity left. I'm washed, dressed, and put to bed by cares who are after all still strangers. I'm fed up with my life and don't want to spend the next 20 years or so like this. Unquote. Patients like this have no dignity left. They have become a sink and don't feel human anymore. Euthanasia is the only way to end this suffering. It is a chance to give them dignity because they have the choice of end their life. This choice gives them the power to feel human. Therefore, we need euthanasia. Thank you. Please say your name in the start. Thank you, Chairperson. My name is Shoma. Let me defend our argument. In the uh, first and second attack point to our both argument, they talked about that. Uh, sorry. They talked about safeguards will work. How, however, as we told you in the first speech, safeguards will not work because even that strict checking system allowed euthanasia to the man who just wanted to reduce family's burden, financial burden. More, this is because doctors cannot. Uh, it is difficult for do even do for doctors to judge if it is voluntary or not. According to a survey done by Anis Bahao to the do Ger uh, German doctors, 96 percent said that it is almost impossible to judge whether patients' mind are stable or not. In other words, it is rational or not. Therefore, judgment is. Di uh, really difficult for doctors. And moreover, also in Japan, doctors are not perfect so that the possibility will happen. According to the news post 1,720 people were misdiagnosed at, out of 21,000 in a in case uh, as having cancer in 2015. This means that even in the case of Japan, those, uh, they cannot, those safeguards cannot work completely because the, those accuracy is not, not perfect. Moving on to our DA1, they said that it is own opinion, so we, those choices should be admitted. However, um, according to the British Journal of Cancer in 2018, some people clearly seemed to be choosing assisted suicide, not because of their own wishes, but because of the fear of how their diseases were affecting their family. This shows that this is not their own opinion, some people died by not their opinion. Moreover, as I told you in the constructive speech, the number of people who died by using by, who died by euthanasia, saying that they died for family and friends, has increased from 13% in 1998 to 55% in 2017. This shows that those people's thoughts were affected by legalization of active euthanasia, so it, it's not their own opinion. And second, they say that it's not the, it is not the main reason. However, their evidence talking about the number one the main reason is loss of dignity is also the multiple answer, and it doesn't say that their main reason is this point. And moreover, as I told you, uh, according to the, uh, the British Journal of Cancer, those pe there's actually some people who died against their true will, so this shows that it's not their own will. All of them are not their own will. Moving on to our DA2. Our main point our DA2 is that the legalization would be pressure on disabled, as the Telegraph says in the constructive speech. So they didn't attack to this point, and what we want to say is that the legalization will be pressure on disabled. Even ordinary people does not feel the pressure, they will feel it. So we must prevent this. In the first point, they said that there's no unique by taking this plan or after they, taking this plan. However, as we talk, what we want to say is that the more pressure will be t given on those disabled people. Like the case of the UK, 64% people opposed fearing the pressure. Second point, they said that. Uh, second point, they said that. Uh, they're talking about not the disabled people. However, whether they have rational mind or not is not the main point. What we want to say is that this evidence shows that slippery slope have happened and the possibility of it cannot be denied. And third point, they say that they should be uh, admitted, should be euthanized when they're feeling pressure. But this pain is not incurable pain. The society can make the, uh, the comfortable society for them, can cure those pains. So we oppose this motion. Thank you. Thank you. We will now have our two minutes preparation time. Are you ready? 
future person, I respect my summary speech. My name is Kaide. First of all, this uh, about, I will explain about their D1. So they said it is irrational to choose youth nature because they feel burden and family. But the main reason for youth nature is not pressure, that is their unbearable pain and endurable suffering. And uh, look at our second attack. 41% of people choose youth nature because of burden and family. But question our words multiple. So we can say clearly the main reason is not pressure, but loss of dignity. And this uh, data supports our D. Uh, 81, 82, and also if, if it is irrational to choose his nature because of pressure, we we are all irrational. If we choose school A or B, and for example, if you choose school A or B, and you choose A school because you wanted to make your family happier, and you want to go to the school, do you think it is bad? No, it is actually their own choice. That's why because they are, that's why the D one doesn't stand. And let's explain our D A two. First, they are attacking their own argument. They said 90 disabled, 19 disabled people were killed, or patients of disabled children feel it is better for them to die than living. But this is their, um, this is the data of uh, current situation. So now, Japan, it has happened. So more importantly, they didn't show the number of patients who did not, who did use it because of disability. So the A2 uh, is just imagination. And so, uh, and, uh, and also for both DA, they said, uh, uh, that this is that Japan, uh, Japanese people made misdiagnosis in the current situation. However, this is not euthanasia data. Also, they said that 69% of doctors answered that it is impossible to know patients' will. will. However, this data is, uh, comes from German. German is not uh, legalized euthanasia, so their defense has no meaning. And third, uh, I will explain about AD1. So they said we have sedation or poison, opioid radiation or many things. But first of all, they, our, as our German speaker said, there are only 3,399 palliative care units across Japan, and about 85% of cancer patients have little choice but to die in general hospitals. So therefore, they are suffering now, and some patients who have led to medicine burning difficulty and chronic extreme pain cannot remove pain. Therefore, we need euthanasia. Then also, uh, they didn't understand about our AD2, so I'll explain. So please imagine if you can't remove body, you cannot buy it your you cannot eat for yourself, you cannot take a bath by yourself, then others carry you like a bath. How do you feel in that situation? This is lots of stuff that our DA2 says. Some patients feel themselves as a thing. We are talking about a very stress situation, and they say dignity is different from each patient. But do you think these people still have dignity? And their attack is uh, meaningless. And this suffering continues one or two or more years. But if they introduce euthanasia, they can choose when to die and how to die. So this is surely autonomous action. So therefore, uh, our AD, our AD2 is important. Also, they say disabled people is not target of euthanasia. But first of all, their data is not about disability. And second, why disabled people must not to receive euthanasia? That's kind of discrimination, right? But affirmative side will give everyone to choose option. Therefore, we need euthanasia. Thank you. Please say your name and start. Thank you, Chairperson and um, Judges. My name is Gordon. First of all, the existence of choice is the biggest problem in this space. Because, because cho choice exists, patient, uh, patient cannot help taking up, uh, cannot help consider fam families, and cannot help choosing use and nature. In order to protect this, this patient, we strongly oppose this motion. First of all, I will compare, uh, I'll, first, of, first issue, which we should prioritize on pa on patient or which we should prioritize to protect patient or disabled uh, looking to AD1 and DA2. Firstly, as for AD1, uh, as they admitted, if morphine used enoughly, 96% of pain completely removed. Their defense speaker never did at this point. Right? So, and not constructive speech, but their defense speaker started to explain palliative care unit and bed is lacking. But uh, as, we, as, we, as we check their data, they hide the most important fact that even um, even even in ordinary hospital, a general hospital, and at, even at home or even clinic, this this um this patient can receive palliative care in the first place. So palliative care is available for all patients in the first place. And also, the defense speaker didn't deny that opioid rotation or morphine or terminal station is not effective. Right? Uh, is effective in the first place. So patients have alternative way to escape from pain. On the contrary. Um, disabled is in much more, uh, much more, in, 
much more serious situation because disabled people have no protection against pressure. And the most important thing in DA2 is that not pay, uh, disabled, disabled euthanasia, but pressure on disabled people. And but because of this motion, society will change and pressure will more much more harsher. Actually, 64% of disabled in UK oppose euthanasia, fearing pressure from society. So what government should do is protect this uh, protect these disabled, not not to protect patients who have alternative way. So, uh, so first from first issue, we been okay. Moving on to second issue about patient dependence on others lead to loss of dignity or irrational choice. Eighty-two. As for eighty-two, how many Japanese want to use an age because of loss of dignity? The, uh, loss of dignity or autonomy in the first place, there, there is no number. And also, even if patients feel loss of dignity, this sense of dignity is changeable with support, such as Ototake, Oto, uh, Mr. Ototake or Mr. Stephen Hawking. So, any, uh, so any two, uh, didn't lead to loss of uh, dependence on others, didn't lead, lead to loss of dignity. But on the contrary, the one is much more serious because after legalization, patients have just two choices. First, Burden of others or second death. And just because family and loved one are crucial for a patient and patients think there is no hope of recovery, patients sacrifice, start to sacrifice themselves. Actually, in Oregon, the euthanasia for family increased from 13% to 55% in 2017. So, this is not their choice, but forced choice. In order to protect these patients, we strongly oppose this motion. Thank you. start with uh, thank you to the teams, uh, thank you to the other judges, thank you to the audience. Uh, my name is Stan Molden, I'll start now. Um, to the, but I do really want to start by saying thank you to both teams. Uh, as they mentioned in their introductions, these are two teams that have seen each other many times, they have debated each other many times, and I think some of that shows in this debate. There's a kind of level of debate that happens here that was very good. It gets very deep. Uh, uh, there's also a little bit of familiarity breeds contempt, which I'll talk about in just a moment. But, um, but I, I do want to thank both teams very much for this debate. It was very enjoyable. Uh, it was a lot of fun to judge and a lot of fun just to sort of watch the debate happen. Uh, so I have a few general comments about the debate, and so I'm, I'm going to look up and. Hello, everyone watching later. Uh, all, all two of you that are watching this on the DVD later. Um, please make sure you watch the debate before my comments because it, it, they make sense that way. Uh, what I want to say in general to everybody about this debate uh, is uh, I think, that, again, this was technically a very good debate. Uh, there's a lot of argument that's happening on, on every position. Uh, and so I want to commend both teams for that. I, I also want to say, um, I think, and this is a strange thing for me to say as a debater, uh, but I think in this topic in particular, I feel like this debate and this topic could use a little more compassion. And what I mean by that is I, I think we, we're talking a lot about these people, right, who are suffering from pain or whatever. Uh, and we're treating them, in a way, just sort of like numbers. And, and so I want, what I want to say to both teams is that, in a way, there should be, you, I want you both to show more compassion. I mean, you're fighting for these people, right? You're fighting for the disabled. You're fighting for the people who are suffering from unbearable pain. I, and so I, I feel like uh, both teams could show a little more care and compassion. Um, this isn't just a debate about what decision a government should make. But, the government is making that decision for people. And so there's a, what we call in communication, a felt difficulty. Right? It's not just the problem, it's not just the impact or the importance, but it's how we feel that importance or that impact. And so I, I would encourage both teams to think about that uh, a little bit. And the second thing, and I said, uh, there's a little bit of familiarity breeds contempt. The second thing I want to say to everybody, uh, especially those of you watching at home, uh, no team in my lifetime, I have never seen a debate team win debate in cross-examination. Right? 
And what I mean by that is, in the question and answer period, relax. Relax. <laughs> Uh, so I, I know we, 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 when we know the other team very well, it, it kind of, I'm not going to lose that argument this time, or I'm ready for you. <laughs> Relax. Right? Uh, th those points are important, the questions are important, but <clears throat> let that happen in the speeches, let that develop. So don't, you, there's no need to argue in cross-examination, we're just asking questions which we will use later. Uh, and the third thing I want to talk about, because it happened in this debate, and I want to uh, sort of talk to, the, again, the wider audience, but also to both teams. Uh, I have a sort of strong feeling about the way we approach what I call procedural issues. And a procedural issue is about the rules of debate. So the question about whether or not Advantage 2 has uh, multiple targets or whether it has more than one. It ended up not really being an issue in the debate because it was gone by the summary speeches, but, but what I want to say is uh, if you are going to make a procedural issue, so specifically to the, the negative team in this case, if you're going to make a procedural issue, you need to be very clear about how you're making it, so you need to express exactly what's wrong, and then be very clear about the, the impact of that, right? that is in, uh, according to the Hender rules what we would do is remove the parts that were extra. So you want to, you want to make sure that we understand what's happening if you say that there are multiple targets. Right? I think the way it was expressed uh, was something like, so the argument becomes meaningless, and that, that's technically not what happens. What happens is, if I were going to do that, I would just abandon the non-elderly, or I would abandon the elderly, depending on uh, how the argument went. So in part, it would be your job, if you want to do that, to say, we, we, we would like to remove this part, and we will debate the, the other part. Okay. So I, I just want to say, when we, when we make these kinds of heavy issues, and a procedural issue is a very heavy issue, because it's an issue about the rules of debate, and about fairness, uh, we, want to be, we want to be very careful about, I don't, we don't want to just very casually say, oh, that's cheating, oh, that's cheating. If I'm going to say that the rules are being broken, then I want to be very clear about how I do that. So I want to be very careful and, and very precise. Uh, okay. Uh, the last thing I want to say is again, very good debate as a, as a general. I think if you watch this debate, that's good. Uh, okay. Now for the big part. Uh, and it, it is, uh, it's always very difficult uh, in this situation. Uh, this is, I think, the third time I've been a main judge for a semi-final at Henda. And it's very difficult because you know at the end of this round, one team will advance uh, and one team will not. And I, I feel sort of a great burden, like all of the judges felt a great burden, because in one sense, I think both of these teams are very good and both deserve uh, a shot at advancing to the final round. <clears throat> but of course, that's not what happens. So, uh, in this debate, it was a 4-1 decision for the affirmative from Takezono. Um, so let me explain very quickly uh, some of the, the thinking, I think, in this debate round. I think part of the issue in advantage one is that the negative manages to minimize the, the risk, but when we're, when we're making an argument, so for example, if I'm going to argue that there's going to be a 96% increase or a 63% increase in the availability of opioids, that's good, that means things are better, but I don't know if that's enough, right? There's a question of need as well. So how much do we need, how much do we have, and then that, that explains whether we cover the gap or not. Uh, it's not clear. The only clear argumentation I have on that is from the affirmative saying that the number of beds is too small. Uh, and I looked at the evidence at the end, so I, I, I read the, the, the evidence to see what you were talking about, about people getting treatment from other places. Uh, and what I want to say is, if you do that also, that's okay. 
right? It's okay to use the other team's evidence against them. But number one, please read the evidence in the debate. Don't just tell me what it says. Actually read it so that it enters the debate in that way. And the second thing is, it, uh, it was very sort of iffy. You, you can, it, it actually says specifically that the treatment is really variable, what, what you can get in other places, whether or not he was qualified to do it. So it, it was there, but it's, I think, a little weak. So I give some advantage uh, to the affirmative for AD1. AD2, loss of dignity, sort of, again, I think comes directly to the question of um, irrational choices of DA1 and AD. ADs are really the same argument about whether or not we can make decisions based on our family. And I think this is part of the problem, which is the question is how much pressure is too much pressure? And again, I think this is a, a, a sort of a difficulty for the negative team, which is I feel some pressure, I, but I make decisions based on money or I make decisions based on pain. or I, All of those things are a kind of, I don't know why one is an illegitimate choice, and the other is not. And I think that was sort of the problem is that for the negative team, you, uh, you assumed at the beginning that was an illegitimate way to make a decision, and then didn't explain why it was an illegitimate way to make a decision. Right? I mean, I, I think th this wasn't in the debate, right? but just to, to make that very simple. If I'm suffering from a lot of pain, I may not want to die, but the pain is putting pressure on me to commit, su to commit suicide. <coughs> So that there's a, there's a, that I have a reason doesn't mean it's not my will, even if that reason is outside of myself. So I think you need to explain that more. There, there are things you can say, right, like undue pressure, and you can try to do that, but it has to be undue pressure, not just pressure. And sort of the same thing about uh, DA3, I think DA, or DA2, DA2 or no, there's no DA3. DA2 has a, a problem of uniqueness, uh, and that's, again, I want you to explain that gap. You're saying it's going to get worse, but there's nothing in the impact or in your importance that explains what the difference is between, say, somebody feeling justified in killing 19 people and whatever's going to happen in this new future. So I have the sense for you that things will get worse, but I don't have any concrete sense of how they're going to get worse or how much worse they're going to get. So that when you're arguing at an, basically a non-unique disadvantage, you have to explain to me what that gap is going to be, how things are going to change. And so I think you need to explain that more clearly and more carefully. Which I guess is all of the issues. Uh, so again, I want to say a uh, good debate, I think, uh, I often tell debaters that one thing I want them to do is to finish the debate, that is get to the impact and explain why things are important. And I feel like that was the very narrow gap in this debate. I think the affirmative team did a better job of finishing the debate and explaining why this issue was important. And the negative team didn't do quite as good a job of finishing the debate and explaining why it was important. But the arguments were all there. Right? The arguments were all there for both teams. So everybody had a chance coming into the defense and summary speeches. Uh, but I just think it was a little better job on the affirmative team of closing the debate. So thank you very much. It was very enjoyable. And always close the debate. Finish your argument. Thank you.